Fisheries and Oceans Canada is working with the aquaculture industry with the goal of helping it operate in a sustainable and responsible way. In Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick, areas like Kokang have experienced a major decline in native wild oyster populations over the past century due to a combination of factors including overfishing, disease outbreaks in the 1950s, and other land-based human activities like forestry, agriculture, and wastes. Oysters are an important part of the ecosystem acting as natural filters for the water. This team of researchers is studying what effect the growth of commercial oyster aquaculture will have on the natural environment. We are presently sitting with about 5% to 10% of the natural population. So we have to rebuild this population uh, to a level that used to exist in order to have the same function that we used to have in these ecosystems. Along with the oyster, there's other species that play a significant role to the health and productivity of the system, and one of them is the eelgrass. So we're trying to understand how the development of aquaculture, the re-establishment of the oyster population, is going to interact with uh, the eelgrass population. Eelgrass has uh, for estuary, especially along the eastern Canada coast there, uh, is, is a good habitat for a lot of, of fish and it provides shelters, feeding grounds, uh, rearing ground. We want to make sure that uh, at the end of the day that the eelgrass is protected. In a natural setting, oysters can improve water quality and clarity for eelgrass. Oysters are filter feeders and by filtering the water, clear the water column and permit the sun to reach the bottom. And that's how it can improve uh, the environment for the eelgrass growth. But the addition of commercial shellfish aquaculture structures adds an extra dimension. There's different ways that the shellfish aquaculture interacts with the, the ecosystem. And uh, because we're uh, focusing in, in specifically with the interactions with uh, uh, ve uh, aquatic vegetation, uh, light is very important. On a local scale, there are some concerns about the shading effects from oyster and mussel aquaculture sites on sensitive eelgrass directly beneath them. However, these researchers are looking at what kind of impact shellfish aquaculture might have on a larger bay scale. Uh, we noticed that there is a positive relationship. The more there was oyster aquaculture in a bay, the more there was eelgrass. That was just a mathematical uh, relationship. So this project that we're doing now is to explore why there is a positive relationship. If we know that the addition of oysters in an ecosystem is contributing to the pr productivity and the health of eelgrass, then it's, it's a question of how to maximize or optimize uh, those two components. The research is multifaceted. The team uses remote sensing data that is collected by airplane using LIDAR. Bathymetric LIDAR uses lasers to penetrate the water column and reflect the seabed. This technology is paired with high-resolution photography to produce detailed maps that are seamless from the land into the nearshore, providing them with a picture of the bottom of the bay to see where and how much eelgrass there is. This data is then cross-referenced with data that the team collects in the bay to ensure its accuracy. The team begins by measuring water transparency. This Secchi disk lets them measure how deep the light can penetrate the water. They also use an underwater camera to take actual photos of the seabed, looking at the health and presence of the eelgrass. They then use a sonde to record the salinity and amount of oxygen in the water. And finally, they collect water samples which they take back to the lab. In the lab, the team is able to measure the types and quantities of particles that are suspended in the water, which affects its clarity. The oysters are also being studied to establish how well and how fast they filter the water. All of the data that they collect is then used to build a computer model that allows the team to forecast what effects this type of aquaculture might have when deployed on different scales and in different locations. What the model does is you reproduce a simplified form of that system. You can increase the, the stock, the, the numbers of oysters in, in uh, cultivation in the bay and see how dif the different variables react to that increase. Not all locations are suitable for aquaculture sites, so these scenarios help with decisions about future sites in a strategic way that will protect and enhance interactions with eelgrass. We're trying to make sure that 
we're gaining the function of filtering animals uh, back into these uh, coastal uh, ecosystem. And aquaculture is definitely bringing that back at a profit. As part of the program for aquaculture regulatory research, this project is providing critical information to regulators that will allow them to make decisions that will ensure that growth of the industry is done in a responsible and sustainable manner. And in this case could in fact help restore ecosystem health in some areas, providing benefits for the industry, the environment, and coastal communities. We hope that with time that we'll be able to uh, maybe get some more uh some more uh, square footage on the water to uh, try to uh, come a little bit bigger and uh, create some more some more jobs. That's where we're heading. That's a nice oyster. This is uh, number one grade, cream of the crop.